Hey, 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 it's Grips, and as always, thanks for joining me yet again. So I have got a request tutorial. A gentleman made this rather nice footage using a quadcopter and a GoPro, and he looks like he's flying it around uh, well, St. John's River, Florida. And uh, it's kind of nice, but the colors are mm, all over the place. Uh, he, you just can't see anything, so it's all clipped in the shadows, and if I go right at the beginning... I've got all. I've lost a lot of detail in the shadows, and then it's clipped in the highlights. So, what we're going to do? We're going to do color correction. That's what we're going to do. So, let's get moving. So, the first thing I do, I'm going to change the gamma. So, I'm going to use the Boris Graffiti filter. I'm going to drop it onto my timeline. Double click, Customs Filter, and Advanced Mode. This is a little trick that I do just to uh, increase the gamma. All right. Now, actually, while I'm here, I'm going to show you something cool. See how I'm just using my mouse wheel, scrolling in and out, and then all of a sudden it just fits to fits perfectly to the project. Now, if you ever want to know how to do this, go into the Edit, Shortcuts, Preview. If you scroll down until you see the word Scale, and then scroll down until you see the word Fit, you can then assign a shortcut key. In my case, I've got number one. So every time I press one, it immediately fits the screen. So somebody's asked me, how do you zoom in so fast? I just don't, I use a shortcut. All right, let's keep moving. So I'm going to highlight my text track on the letter T, left click, and I'm going to change it to a color layer. Okay. If yours is not black, by default, it might be white. Just go into the face track, and then you can pick the black color here and then press OK. All right, but it needs to be black because if you ever used any form of photo editing, you, you know about blend mode. So let's go back onto the solid color. We go into composite, and you'll see here apply mode. So uh, you know, if let's expand it so you can see screen, multiply, dark, and all this. But if you have a black layer and you press the word add, it subtracts the black layer. And now it makes it transparent. Now, now I'm going to use this as adjustment layer. So I'm going to just change gamma. Now, if you don't know what gamma is, the best explanation I can come up with, it's basically the light difference between the dark tones and the light tones. I'm going to increase it all at once rather than doing it selectively. You could probably do similar with a contrast filter, but for me, I just find this so much easier. Have a look at the preview window and how quickly I can adjust the gamma. So I can immediately see a lot more detail coming through my video, right? And that's what gamma does. It just balances the dark shadows to the light shadows. Well, I shouldn't say shadows, tones, tones, that's the word I'm looking for. And I'm quite happy with that. Maybe it's a little bit too much. So let's drop it down because I'm going to add a couple more filters. All right, press apply. And that's then been added to the entire footage. So already you can see uh, I've made a good adjustment here. But I'm kind of now losing some details up here, and that's okay. So another thing I'm going to do is add in an auto filter or auto level. Unfortunately, the one thing that limits non-linear editors is you don't get histogram you don't get vector scope so you really you're going on the fly here so anyway let's go into my uh all and then look for auto levels auto levels just drop it in it's always good to do and it just kind of balances everything out i'll give you a really good example of what i mean there's a piece of footage here I, okay if i remove my auto levels now look what happens it just becomes bleached, doesn't it? It's just all washed down. So this adds a lot of detail in it. But fear not, I'm st we're not even halfway through yet. But uh, you can see the color is in here. It's not too bad. But my, my problem is I don't want to lose the blue sky and maybe just drop some of the clipping in the highlights here as well. But this is one of the things that really sets it apart. If I go to auto levels here, have a look at this. And if I turn off my Boris filter and my auto levels, all I have basically is a lot of clipping into my shadows. Now clipping basically means uh, you've lost detail. There is not, you can't see anything anymore. And if I then increase it, you can see a lot more details. And I can still improve on this as well. So I'm going to go right back and I'm going to grab one more filter. Go to my favorites because these are my two favorite filters. And I'm going to drop the color fast. And this is where a lot of the magic happens. I'm going to go into the color fast. Uh, set up so here we go in the menu here we go so uh, we can do a couple of things now we also have fill gamma here but I don't like using the fill gamma I like to do my way you know you, you don't have to do it my way but it's just a really quick and simple way to do it all right so this is real time so it updates I don't really ever use this little window because 
normally when I do color grading, I work on three monitors. You know, I have another monitor just for the color and then one monitor just for the footage. Yes, that's what I do. <laughs> All right, so we're just basically gonna work in the, not in the primary colors. If, you're, if you still need to add a little bit of white balance, by all means, you can add the, ooh, you can add the white balance. It doesn't really do much because it's already white anyway. But I'm gonna use here the secondary colors. So this is my highlight, mid-tones and shadows. So black, gray, uh, oh, sorry, white, black, and let's try that again. <laughs> white, gray, black, all right? Now, what it basically does, if I enable these, I can then uh, increase or decrease white, blacks, and grays. So let's first pick on white. So let's make sure we do have actually white. And now I can increase the level of white that goes in or increase the level of white that I want to add. So obviously, the more white that I add, the more I'm going to lose detail because I'm clipping the, cl uh, the footage again. So I want to drop that down so I can get some of the detail back in my sky. See, now the blue returns and I can see some detail in the clouds. Unfortunately, this is the sun and there is not much you can see in the sun, right? All right, gray. So this is a gray area here. So we might pick that gray. And again, we might increase it slightly to get a little bit more detail coming through. As you can see, I've now enhanced the gray area so I can see a little bit more. And then obviously black. So I'm going to find something that's black. And obviously here, I also want to increase the black slightly. It's only affecting the black tones there. And now I'm going to see a little bit more detail again. And I'm quite happy with that. So what I'll do is Control C on the, on the first keyframe. I'm going to use the key marker here, push it right to the end, and Control V. So I've applied everything along the timeline. I'm very happy with that. And press OK. And then let's have a look. Let's have a look at this bit here. Wow, I can see a lot of detail now. Whereas before it was just all clipped into the shadows and I couldn't see anything. And that looks really good now. You know, some areas are probably a little bit more saturated. This here is very interesting. I'm not sure if I showed in the beginning. But let's have a look if we uncheck all the filters. Look at that. We've, yeah, there's no detail in here whatsoever. It's just a lot of shadow. I can barely make out what this car is. But by adding all this in, it's, uh, it brightens everything up a bit. All right, now it looks 100% uh, better. Now, it also, it's your personal preference. Like, if you don't want that much saturation in your colors, well, then go back into your color filter, and then you can adjust the saturation. But here's something that we can also do. If I move along the timeline, all right, here, here's, here's could be a good example. What happens if I just want to add some more detail in this area here? Well, then I'm going to apply a mask. Now, the thing is, you're not limited to only using one filter. I can use color fast many times. So I'm going to drop another color fast filter on my footage. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't take it, does it? Double click, and I'm going to then create the mask on this footage here. So um, I need more real estate, don't I? Here we go. This is the area. Yep. So to add a keyframe, just move any of these um, settings and that automatically adds a keyframe. Not like uh, Boris Graffiti, you add the keyframe and then make adjustments. Here it's automatic, you make an adjustment and adds a keyframe. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna add a mask just on this area here. So let's enable a mask. Now let's have a look at the shape of the mask currently. Looks kind of weird, so let's adjust the shape. So we only want it over here, push it right on the end. And bring it up here, here I'm going to drop the, the curves and then I'm going to feather it right up so it blends in nicely. I can probably add that up a bit, probably a bit more of a feather so it blends in quite easily into the, the video. And now again I can just start changing. So it's highlights so I might start increasing or decreasing the highlights. So I might just decrease the highlights and as you can see it updates in real time. I now create more detail in that highlight. And if I want more blacks in there, fine, I can do that too. So I'm just creating a mask for this area that affects that area. If I'm happy with everything, Control C, go to my last keyframe, Control V. If you really don't want that to continue, you add another keyframe and then remove the mask. So let's do that because this might confuse you slightly. So let's go after that footage has finished. So 
And we got still there, still there, still there, still there. All right. And let's just say, nah, I don't want the mask here anymore. Then uncheck it, and now just remove the mask. I don't know how long I need to see this mask. So basically, the mask will show from here to here and then disappear afterwards. See, and there's no more mask there. And that's how we could apply shape masks or using the color filter multiple times just to highlight certain areas. And again, you can go through that and decide what you want to do and what you want to increase. And there you go. So uh, this is a good way of doing color correcting. You can spend more time. Color correcting, you need a bit of time. You really need to sit there and look at your footage. And it's not something you can just drop a filter on it and walk away and go, yep, I'm done. It's, it takes a lot of time. But like I said, if we uncheck all our, and have a look at the original footage, you'll see that eh, it's bleached out and not much life in there. So maybe a little bit, a bit oversaturated, but again, now look at that. I've left the mask on, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, that's just a matter of just going in here and go into this keyframe that it shows the mask and I'm just going none. The mask is still there, I'm just not showing it. That's basically what it means. There you go. I just left the shape mask toggled on. There you go my friends and all those are watching. If you want to do some basic color corrections, then this is how it is done. And as always, thanks for watching. A, a snapshot of this picture and enlarge it so you can really see it. I'm going to take a snapshot. Now you can do that.